let's bang through the Fusion 360 cam for that Arduino CNC stepper bracket that we've been talking about in a few recent videos. So first thing first, we've got effectively an assembly here. I don't need this nut, so that's uh, this part right here. Click on the light bulb, that hides it. Now, let's change from model to cam. And the first thing we need to do is set up our job. So that's setting up the X, Y, Z, uh, zero point, as well as our stock material. So set up, new setup. Now, I don't like that it defaults to adding um, some stock around it. So we're going to change it to relative size box with no additional stock. That's usually what I, I like. And we will then go back to model and we'll choose that point. So that'll be the top right point of our part. And the way to think about X, Y, Z, zero, blue is the sky, and then just bring your arm down. I know that looks a little silly. And the, your arm pointing out is Y positive, and this arm is um, X positive. So if we see here, we definitely need to reverse the Z, click that, goes up, and then we need to reverse the X, and now all of a sudden we've got it. So Y positive, X positive, and then Z positive toward the sky. We're good to go. 2D adaptive clearing. We're going to machine this pocket here for the recess of the stepper. No feeds and speeds today. Let's just get through toolpaths. So three different things you can select to tell it where to create the toolpath. You can select the top contour, you know, this line right here. You can select the face walls along the inside of that pocket, or you can select the bottom contour. It's best here to select the bottom contour because when we go to our heights tab, it's going to tell it's going to assume that the bottom the contour we selected is the bottom of where we're machining. I don't like stock top as the top, even though we'd set no additional stock. If we went and changed that later, it could change where we're starting our machining from. So I'm going to change it to model top. If you have problems with your cam, I absolutely suggest going in and manually setting your top and bottom. So change it from this, whatever you have it, to selection, and then we're actually going to choose that face. That to me is takes any risk of it misunderstanding what you're trying to get it to, to do. And we should be good, but let's talk about um, one of the things I don't like in Fusion 360 is the tolerance defaults to four thousandths. I like taking it down to half a tenth, um, excuse me, half a thou, five tenths, and then right click and choose make default, defaults it to that. Um, optimal load, that's what I think of as width of cut. We'll do point 0.1 and we don't want any stock to leave. I don't like that it defaults to that. Um, sometimes I do want to leave stock, but more often than not, I don't. So click, let's see here. This is just linking. We can come back to that in another um, operation. Oh, got to select my tool, sorry. We'll do a quarter inch end mill. And there we go. One simulation here just to see that real quick. Helical ramping in. Again, we'll come back to how to change that. And it's taking about a 0.1 inch step over, which is great. And you'll see when it gets to the corners, it's going to take little high speed machining tool pass in there to try to prevent the tool from bogging down or, or increasing the chip load, which will cause deflection and changes your spindle horsepower requirements. It's a nice way to machine, like right there. Okay, keep going. Oops. Let's machine this path here. Now, if we just click on 2D Adaptive again, oops, it should keep the same tool we had selected before, which is nice. Now we're going to select this bottom ring here, and under Heights, I'm just going to do Selection of here. Now, I actually want to go all the way through it, so we have the selected contour, and we're going to go negative 0.05. Hopefully it doesn't get mad at me, and you should be able to see. There we go. I'm going to why goof there. So that'll let us go all the way through. And let's turn off stock to leave and leave it like that. Perfect. And you'll see it's a note. It knows now that we've already got this machine. Now you can also just right click, copy, and then right click on setup and choose paste. And that's going to save more of your settings, which can be nice. So let's machine this pocket here. We'll delete this chain, choose the bottom contour. We need to check our heights. The top height is wrong and the bottom height is wrong. So we'll change the selection to that. And then the bottom height will be that. We don't want an offset here. Click OK, like so. 
This one we can copy again, and that'll actually be easier for this one right here. That we might be able to just click OK on. OK, so it might have done that because it's too small of a pocket for it to helical into. So one of the options we can make that helical ramp narrower or steeper. The way we do that is the linking, expand this ramp, and we can change it to say 10 degrees. That'll make it a steeper, but most importantly, the ramp diameter. Let's see here, what is that? So this is a 0.24 inch radius hole. So we'll right click. By the way, one of the things I don't like, sometimes this gets minimized. It can be kind of hard to see. So click plus if you lose it, which I just did. So I had to pause the movie. And what we'll do is we'll change the ramp in to say 10 degrees and we'll say the ramp diameter of only 0.15 or something like that. Click OK and boom. See how it's a steeper helix and it's going to go ahead and fit in the toolpath. OK, paste yet another one. We'll do this slot on this recessed counter bore here. Geometry like so. Delete these. Top will be here. Bottom will be here. Now let's see if we get a tool path. Nope, I'm guessing it's the ramp in. So let's change to helix, sorry, to 10 degrees, you know, 0.15. Oop. 0.1. Ooh, no. Well, so one, one option is to change from a ramp to just a plunge, just to see if that solves the problem. Perfect, so now we get a tool path and we see that the issue is the uh, entry into the part. So if we had pre-drilled this or something, or you could plunge, I hate plunging. Let's try an even narrower ramp diameter. Let's go to 0 0.08, see if that works. Yeah, there we go. And you can see because we're using a quarter inch tool on a, effectively a 3 8 inch slot, you don't have a lot of wiggle room there. So now we get our tool path. Let's take a quick look at that one. And if you wanted, you could, you know, very um, justifiably switch down to like a 3 16 tool. Um, and in fact, we're going to have to switch down to a thinner tool on this next operation because this is only point one two. So let's do a 3 16 tool. And we're going to do this as a 2D contour. So we'll go. 2D contour. We'll expand our stupid thing that got hidden. Why they do that so easily. Change the tool to 3 16 and select the bottom line as the geometry. And our top height will be selection of this. Bottom height, we're going to do a selection of this and we're going to go through 50 thou. So we're all the way through the part. Okay, it gives me an error. I'm guessing it certainly has to do with lead in. So let's try this. Lead in, let's just say go thin real for at first just to see 5 thou. Bet you that'll do it. Yeah. And if you take a look, it is really close to being a, a slot. And you don't really want a slot in, um, for precision. You'd much better off to take, a, yet again, a smaller tool to get a precise tool path here. OK, now if you did want to, say, cut this in two depths of cut under passes, sorry, passes, here we go, you can choose multiple depths. And you say the maximum roughing depth of, say, 0 0.08. And that would let you. You know, you could say use even step downs, click OK. We should get a couple of, yeah, there you go, three. And you should look, the last tool path will be underneath the bottom of the part, which is exactly what we wanted. I think we're mostly, uh, just separate from drilling, mostly done. Let's do the fillets in the top corner of the part. So 2D contour. Now, I don't like the way we have to do this. Um, Fusion 360 and HSM Works are the same cam, and they're basically the same GUI. But this I don't like at all. HSM Works is much better at this, so Autodesk fix this. Um, to select, only, basically, it's going to want to select the whole line around it. And in HSM Works, there's an option to unpropagate along the both plane and tangent contours. 
there isn't that option here that I, at least that I see, this wasn't doing it. What you gotta do is click on it, or double click on it, and then change it to an open contour, and then click accept current thing, and that lets us do what we want. Selection from here to, you know, here, we're gonna go, again, through the part a little more, and that should give us what we want, like so. Let's do some hole drilling. 2D, or drilling, sorry. Um, really simple, we'll just do a spot drill. And holes, select these. Usually you can say, select same hole diameter, that'll pick both of them. And clearance, top height will be here. Well, see, hole height gets dangerous. You gotta be real careful. In simulation, we'll, we'll do the trick, but sometimes I like overriding it with the selection. So here, and then we're gonna go from the selection we're going to go down, in this instance, say 40 thou to spot those two holes. And we'll do another, we'll try a different way here. Drilling, same tool. This time, let's do one of these. Click, OK, oh, here, we're going to fix the heights. Now let's do this, inspect and the distance between the two is 1.102. Uh, actually, that's, uh, let's go back to model. I wanted the distance on center. There we go. 1.22, there we go. So in CAM, normally you would just choose the four holes or auto-select them, but it is important to know how to use the pattern and repeat in CAM. So you can right-click and say, add to new pattern and Expand this thing, linear pattern, direction one is here, and we'll say it's spacing for direction is 1.22. That puts the hole over there. I want to do a second direction though. Additional direction here, same thing, 1.22, and that puts it in all four holes uh, on a pattern instead of selecting them all. Just food for thought. And uh, well, that's it, folks. So that was a quickie. More to come on CAM and Fusion 360. If you have specific parts or things you want to see, hit me up. We've got a good Wednesday widget coming up. We've got some other good Arduino projects coming up. Awesome times, folks. Look forward to seeing, uh, seeing the comments, thumbs up, shares, all that good stuff. Take care. See you soon.